Hey team, we're gonna learn how to use browser events to interact with a search autocomplete in React. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. When dealing with events inside of React, we're typically dealing with synthetic events, where we can actually add these events right to the React components, and we can get a lot of things just out of the box with React. Probably the most common ones we deal with are mouse events, where we have things like on click, where we're just trying to see if somebody's actually clicking a button and react to it in some kind of way. But sometimes when you're in a React application, you need to actually listen to the DOM events in a native way. A common example of this might be Google's homepage, where if you refresh the page, they're automatically going to focus on that search bar. Or this swappy people search that I created, where if I'm actually searching for something, I want to be able to use my arrow keys to move up and down this list, where I can use tab, but it's much more intuitive if I'm using my arrow keys as well. Which is exactly where we're going to start off for this new tutorial, where we're going to actually use this swappy demo as a way for us to learn how to use these browser events inside of a React application. And for this application, we're going to focus on two examples, where the first one will be, when you reload the page, I want to automatically focus on the search input. Where the second use case is when I start to search for something, I want to be able to use the arrow keys to actually navigate up and down that list. So if you want to follow along with this exact project, you could head over to my GitHub where you can find the My Swappy Search repo, which I'll also include in the description, where you can use this project to get up and running by running Yarn Create Next App with this as an example. So we're going to do just that, where I'm going to copy this create command, head over to my terminal, and I'm going to pass in a directory for my project name, and let's call it my swappy events. And what's going to happen is Next.js is going to go out, clone down this project that I created as an example to your local project, and it's going to go ahead and install all the dependencies so we can immediately be up and running. And once we see that it finishes, we can navigate over to that directory, run yarn dev, and we can see that we automatically start a local development server where in the background, what I'm already doing in this project is I'm reaching out to the Swappy API, which if you haven't heard of the Swappy API, it's the Star Wars API, where it's going to allow us to fetch a list of people or other different lists, and it's going to allow us to use it in the application, which is exactly how I'm using this search autocomplete. So before we actually go down the hole of starting this project, let's take a look around and see what we actually get out of the box. Where inside of the pages directory, we have our index.js file, which is our home page, which this is going to be pretty much where we're going to work out of for this particular demo. But this is going to be available at localhost 3000 by default, unless you set a different port. But as we can see here, it's a pretty basic example of a React application where I have this state that's currently storing the query where I'm grabbing that from a search form. And whenever that search form changes, I'm going to scrape the results that I'm grabbing from the swappy where I'm going to pass in all those results inside of an unordered list, which I'm displaying in the UI. In Next.js, we have functions that allow us to fetch data. So in particular, here I'm using get static props, which is one of those methods, where here we can see that I'm grabbing three pages of people from the Star Wars API, and I'm returning that as a prop to my application, where ultimately I'm able to grab that and use it just like any other React application. And with that, we get what we see here, which is really a basic example of a search autocomplete. But now let's start off with the first example, where because literally the only thing you can do on this page is search, I want to make sure that anytime this page loads, it immediately focuses in on this search input. To do that, inside of a React, I ultimately want to be able to have access to this input field, where once I do have access to it and it's node, I'm going to be able to run the focus function on it, which is a native method in JavaScript. So to start off, we're going to use refs, which is React's way of being able to have access to those DOM nodes. So at the top of the page, we want to start off by importing the use ref hook, which is going to allow us to use that API. Where at the top of this component, I'm going to create a new input ref and simply set that equal to use ref. But now I take that input ref and I'll scroll down to find that actual input. And I'm going to pass in a new prop of ref and have it equal to that input ref. So one trick with the ref though, is we're not going to have it available on the very first render. It's only going to be available for the previous render. So we can only access this once the actual component renders. 
To do that, we want to use the use effect hook, where as soon as the component renders, the use effect hook will fire, where we can grab that input and we can actually run that focus method. So back in the react import statement, I'm also going to add use effect, where underneath my input ref, I'm going to add that use effect. And what I'm going to do is pass in a function as that's going to be what's called as soon as it renders. Now I'm also going to pass in a second argument of an empty array, meaning it's only going to fire once, where if I passed in a different argument, such as a different variable that might change on every render, React will use that variable to determine if it should run again, where it'll run every time it sees that it's changed. But that's not necessarily important for this particular example where all we want to do is run it one time as soon as the page loads and use it to focus on our input. So now that we have this available, we're going to actually try to access that input through this use effect. And we can first try that out by using our console log where we're going to console log input ref, but then we're going to use the current property, which is where that is going to be stored. If we refresh the page and look inside of our developer tools, we can now see that we get access to that exact input. So as I mentioned before, we actually have a native method for being able to focus on an element. So now that I'm able to actually get access to this input, I'm going to simply run that focus method and let's see what happens. We can see when I refresh the page here and notice my mouse is in the top right corner here. When I refresh, we can see that it automatically focuses on that input. But again, this was just a basic example to show how we can actually have access to those elements as effects inside of a React application. So now let's use something similar so that anytime we see this autocomplete, I wanna be able to say, hey, I wanna scroll down to Darth Vader and I wanna use my arrow keys instead of the native tabs. So we're going to actually start off by adding another use effect instance, where inside of here, what we want to end up doing is we want to add a new event listener so that anytime somebody actually hits their keyboard, we're going to be able to detect that. So we'll say document body add event listener, where we're going to listen for the key down event. And inside that, we're going to run a function where we're going to abstract this function so that we're not just creating it every single time. And additionally, so we can clean that up later. So we'll just say on key down. So as I alluded to, we want to also clean up this event listener where every time this component mounts, it's going to run this use effect hook when it actually renders. But when it unmounts, when for instance, we navigate to a new, a new page that doesn't have that component anymore, we want to make sure we clean up all those resources from the browser. To do that, we're going to return a new function from that use effect hook, where we're going to run basically the exact same thing, but instead of add event listener, we're going to run remove event listener. But what this is going to do is this function is going to fire anytime this component unmounts, cleaning up those resources. But now let's actually create this new function where I'm going to say function on key down. And inside of that, we're going to be receiving an argument called event, which is going to have all the information about when somebody actually pushes down on a key. To see what that looks like, I'm going to console log out that event. So now if I click inside of this input and let's say I type in L for Luke, we can look at this new keyboard event, which we could see all of this information, including things like the target, where we're going to be able to see where exactly that was triggered inside of. Now, similarly, if I now push the down arrow and the up arrow, let's look at what this logs out, where we can see that we now have this property. We have both a code and a key, where we're going to use this key, but we see that it says arrow down. And similarly, the other one says arrow up. So we're going to be able to use those to determine if somebody actually pressed the up or down arrow keys. So to start off, I'm going to create two constants to help me actually understand what's happening inside of this function. So I'm going to create constant is up and I'll say event key equals arrow up. And then I'm going to create a second one called is down and we'll do the same thing, but we'll say arrow down. And then we can use those constants and say if is up, let's just console log up. And then similarly, we can do the same with is down, where we can simply say it's down. And now if I hit down, we can see that it's going down. And if I hit up, it says up. So now when I actually have results and I hit the down arrow key, I want to be able to go to that first result and then continue to go on through the rest of the results. 
Similar to the same focus technique that we used for the input itself, we can use the same thing that would happen as if we use the tab key, where what it's doing is it's focusing on these different elements. So instead, we can look for which element we wanna focus on and tell the browser to focus on that element whenever we hit one of those keys. So to do that, inside of my code on the unordered list, I'm going to add a new ref and let's call that results ref. Where then again at the top of the component, I'm going to clone that input ref and add that results ref. So now inside of my on key down function, anytime someone clicks the up or down key, I wanna make sure that I'm able to grab that list of elements and find which one I'm looking for. So I'm going to create a new constant called results items where I'm going to set that equal to results.current, which is going to grab that unordered list, but then I'm going to access the children of that unordered list, which is going to be a node list of the different list items, the LIs inside of that UL. And then finally, so that I can easily parse through that with indexes, I'm going to say array.from those children. But now inside of this is down if statement, I'm gonna say results items, and I'm gonna grab the zero index of that. But then because that would actually select the list item, where inside of these results, I wanna ultimately focus on the A anchor tag, where that's going to be what's actually focusable for me. So inside of that function, I'm gonna say results item, and then I'm gonna query selector for that A element, and then I'm gonna run focus. Now, if we come to our browser and try to complete a search again, we can see that we actually get an error and we see that we don't have access to these children. The issue is this on key down event is trying to fire before we actually have any results rendered onto the page. So that means we don't actually have any current children. So to resolve this, what we'll actually do is we'll say that we only wanna ever add this event listener only when we have results. So we can see here that I have this state and the results, and I even have this has results constant already created, but I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna lift it up above all this logic that we just added, just so that I can have access to this has results. But now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to say inside of this use effect hook, if I have results, I'm going to then add this key down event. Now you might be wondering if this is only going to fire before we actually have results, how will we ever have results if this is only firing once? Now, if you remember, I also mentioned that we would be able to pass arguments into this array so that anytime that value changes, React will actually run this again during the next render. So what we can do is we can take has results and we can pass that in so that anytime has results changes, which will change if we have results, it'll fire this function again. So we can see here, if we have results, it's going to actually add that event listener. But say this runs again, if somebody clears that search input, we wanna also make sure that we remove that event listener. So I'm gonna say else, we're going to run the same thing as when we clean up, and we're gonna say we're gonna to want to remove that event listener for on key down. But now back in the browser, if we actually try to start typing again, we can see that we're doing great and we're able to load those results again. But now bonus, if we click down, we can see that it went to that first result. But if I keep hitting down, it's just moving the page. We can see that the event is firing, but we never set it to actually be able to see beyond that first result. So when we're in this on key down function, I wanna actually perform this differently depending on if the input is focused on. Because if the input is focused on, I wanna go to that very first result. Otherwise, if it's not, I wanna just go to the next item in that list. So the nice thing, the browser has this ability to detect what the active element in the actual page is. Now, if I run this with nothing actually active, we can run document.activeElement, and we can see it's the body, because I have nothing focused. But I actually focus on this input and run that again. While we can't actually see that it's currently focused because I'm currently active inside of the terminal, we can see that it does show that it's that search. So we can use that against the input ref to determine if it is active. So at the top, I'm going to add a new constant that says input is focused. And I'm gonna say, I want that equals to document.active element is equal to my input ref dot current. But now I'm going to wrap this existing focus statement with that if statement. That way, the only time we'll actually try to grab the very first item is when the input is focused. But now we wanna be able to navigate to the next item. 
So what we'll do is we'll look through that list of items and try to find which one is the active element. So I'm going to create a new constant and I'm going to call that active result index, where I'm going to look through all of my results items and I'm going to use the find index method where for each of these children, I wanna to try to find if that child is the active element. So I'm going to return this statement where we're going to say our child. And remember, we wanna look and see if the anchor tag is the one that's actually selected. So we'll use query selector again, where we'll look for that A element, but we'll say, is that equal to our document active element? But inside of our input is focus statement, we'll add an else statement and we'll say, if that's not the case, we wanna look for the active result index, but plus one, where we're going to focus on that element. And now if we try to start our search and we keep hitting down, we can see that it keeps going down for us. Now, if we have a search that has less results, such as SK for Skywalker and apparently Bosk, if we hit down and we get to the very end, we can see that we actually get an error because that element doesn't exist as we already hit the end. So I'm going to turn this into an else if statement where I'm going to say, I'm only going to run this if that element actually exists. But now we gotta do something if it actually gets down to the end of the list. So I'm going to add, again, another else statement. But this time, if we're at the very bottom of the list, we wanna go back up to the actual input so that we can refocus on that input. So I'm going to say the input ref current and I'll run focus. And now if I hit down, we can see that we're navigating through our results. And if I hit down again, we can go right back up to our input and keep cycling through. So now that we're doing that for the down key, let's actually do it for the up key. This logic is going to be very similar to the is down logic. So I'm going to simply copy this and paste it into the is up logic. But this time, if the input is focused, I don't wanna focus on the first item. I wanna focus on the last item. So whether we're essentially going reverse through that loop. So I'm gonna say that instead of the zero, I wanna focus on the results items dot length minus one so that we can get that last item. And if we hit the up key, we can see that it goes to the bottom. So let's finish out the rest of that logic. So as we're going down through this logic, we don't wanna to go to the next item. We wanna to go to the previous item. So I'm going to change this plus one to minus one. And now we can see when we arrow up, we can keep going through the results. And even when we hit the top, because of our existing else statement, we're already going back to that input. The great thing is while we have a lot of native capabilities with React to listen to events, like those click events we talked about, we can still tap into the native browser events to do things that are a little bit outside of the wheelhouse of React itself. React is a super powerful framework that gives us a lot of options to manage interactions with browsers. But sometimes we need to go back to the browser and manage those events ourselves. What's your favorite use case for having to deal with managing events outside of React? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn how to incorporate search like this inside of your own e-commerce React application, I just announced my new course where I'm going to be bringing Jamstack to the world of e-commerce. Make sure you check out the link below and in the description to get updates. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.